That is the promise of Gogoro. From a discharge battery to a full one in just six seconds. If you're confused, let me set some context first. Gogoro is a Taiwanese electric mobility company and one that is at the forefront of battery swapping technology. In Taiwan, there are more GO stations than fuel pumps and Gogoro has a 90% share in Taiwan's e-scooter market. In India, the story is not quite the same yet. There are only six GO stations and they're only in Delhi NCR. But the company plans to have between 150 to 200 GO stations by the end of 2024. By that time, they also plan to have 20,000 e-scooters flying on these roads. If you're wondering why you haven't heard too much hype around the brand, it's because they're only here for a pilot project for now, as you can see here. And that pilot project only involves B2B customers. Makes sense, right? While you and I might have a couple of hours to spare while our electric vehicle charges up, a person delivering on Swiggy, Zomato or Zip doesn't really have that luxury of time. For them, the reason to switch to Gogoro isn't the emission-free motoring. Yes, there may be some tree huggers out there, but for them, it really is the promise of being able to swap in a discharged battery with a fully charged one faster than it takes to refuel a scooter. Six seconds. But of course, that's the promise. The reality is a little bit different because it takes about six seconds to unlock the scooter. Then you open the boot. Then you have to take out the 10 kg set of batteries, which takes about 30 seconds. And then the system recognizes those batteries. Then it gives you two fresh batteries. Six seconds is just for the swap. In total, it takes less than a minute, which is still super duper quick. And what that means is that riders who were doing 10 deliveries in eight hours and then putting their scooters for charge are now able to do 25 deliveries a day, which is significantly improving their income. The batteries themselves are slightly heavy though. They weigh about 10 kgs, but thankfully the swap stations aren't very tall. So you never really have to lift them very high up. Still, if the fully charged battery that you're about to get is in the upper section of the swap station, it does take a little bit of effort to pull them out and then take them to your scooter. Now, there are some other specifics as well. Number one is range. Now, each scooter can do between 90 to 105 kilometers with a fully charged pair of batteries. Gogoro says that most users, they come in and swap their batteries when they're about 30% of charge left, which makes sense. Now, the second thing is payments. Right now, this being a pilot project, Gogoro is not charging any money for the battery swaps. So the riders, they ride in, they take out their old discharge batteries, they put them into the center, and then they take fresh new batteries and they ride out. No payments there. The third thing is cost. Now this, again, being a pilot project, we don't have a figure on the cost yet. Currently, riders are paying rupees 35 per day for the scooter and for the batteries, and they can do unlimited swaps in that. Of course, that won't be the cost later because right now, Gogoro is getting more out of this pilot test project than the riders are getting out of it, even though it may seem vice versa. This is vital testing data. In the future, Gogoro says the cost of these swaps and the scooters will be in total 10 to 15% lesser than an equivalent ICE scooter. Again, we don't have an exact figure on that yet. Now, in the future, the payments will be done on a postpaid basis, similar to a data usage plan, which means that you won't be paying per swap of each battery, but you'll be paying based on the energy consumed. So let's say you use 50% of battery energy across five swaps. So you do 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. And you also do maybe like a 50% on a single battery and you swap it in for a new battery. You'll be paying about the same amount of money. So it'll be energy consumed versus per swap. The batteries are also random in a sense. You could put in a brand new battery, one that is at the peak of its performance capabilities, 
and get one in return that is slightly older or one that doesn't relatively perform as well as the one that you've put in. I say relatively because Gogoro uses artificial intelligence to continuously monitor the voltage, the current, the condition, the temperature and the state of charge of its batteries to make sure that they're all up to the mark all of the time. And they also monitor the riding and swapping patterns to figure out where fully charged batteries might be needed and then distributes its energy across its network accordingly. And if you're wondering what the batteries are powering, it is one of Gogoro's smart scooters. These are direct imports, but there are some additions to it to make them better suited for the B2B segment. They get neat details like a phone holder, a luggage rack, and the smart scooter also has removable body panels that are really easy to replace in case of damage. Now, because this is a prototype, it's not tailor-made for the Indian market and that's really evident in the low ground clearance and the stiff suspension that it has. But what's also evident is the performance that this is packing. We haven't done thorough testing because this was quite a short ride, but 50 km per hour comes up in no time at all. And I got up to about a speedo indicated figure of 107 km per hour, which is, yeah, it's fast. There's also some really neat details on this that I am personally a big fan of. The range, for example, it's not just shown in kilometers, but it's shown in decimal points of those kilometers. So, for example, it would say 51.3, 51.2, 51.1, and I think that's a really nice touch on it. I also like the seat. It's nice, big, wide and supportive. I think taller riders should also find it comfortable. You don't touch your knees to the front at all. I also like the smart mode on this, which does multiple things. Firstly, it adjusts the regen automatically. It also optimizes the power output automatically, depending on your riding style at that moment. And thirdly, it also dims the headlight if you're at a standstill to save the battery. And then as soon as you get moving, it will brighten that headlight back up. So it's a pretty neat feature. Now, Gogoro uses the one platform, which is an open platform. And internationally, multiple brands use this platform, Yamaha included. Now, the company says that the India strategy will be the same approach. So we could potentially see multiple e-scooter brands use the same platform and the same battery swapping network. Gogoro plans to hit the consumer market in the next two years. And in an ideal world by then, they would have planned out and started manufacturing a scooter that is made specially for India. Hopefully, there will also be enough swapping stations then to serve customers and a solid service network to back things up. Plus, by then the company would have had the experience of running B2B operations in India for a couple of years already. But today, there are still a lot of questions. Cost would be my first big question mark. Gogoro is clearly saying they're not trying to undercut the competition and make headlines that way. What they're promising is a quality product and a well thought out ecosystem around it. The second is scalability. We've seen other brands in the past try battery swapping stations, but they're often so few and so far in between that you're better off just charging the battery on your own rather than going and finding a swapping station. Clean mobility that takes less time and less hassle to recharge than it takes to refuel. That's the promise. It's working really well for the few that are trying it out today. And honestly, I'm really excited to see how it pans out for you and I.